Dads. You've got dads. Good day, guys. It's Jerry here. Welcome back to Dream Daddy. So we've had a little bit of break from Dream Daddy, but I want to get back on into it. So we just finished our third and final date with Daddy Craig. So now we're going to go on a date with the beautiful hunk, Matt. And then the last episode will be on a date with Hugo, because they were our top three guys. So let's go on a date with Matt. Now, we haven't actually had our second date with Matt yet, I don't believe. Have we had one with Hugo? We haven't had our second date with Hugo either. So we're going to do both the second and third date in this episode with Matt right now. So, grab yourself a nice cup of coffee. It's time for a roasty date with Matt. That's what we did a date with Matt. Hmm. If I feel like we did a date with Matt the second date, then I will just skip through it. Instead of messaging the guy who, why don't I just walk over and grab some coffee? I'm feeling really sluggish anyway. Amanda! Um, what was I? Mm. Amanda, sticks her hair out of her room. Father! Wanna go to the coffee spoon? Are you so going? You s Oh, you so get cooled cool once and now you're the cool dad who hangs out at the coffee shop and listens to neo jazz and stuff. Amanda. Are you going to bring your laptop and your leather bound journal so you can work on your poultry? Look, honey, do you want me to buy you coffee or not? I didn't think about that. Let me grab my laptop and my leather bound journal. <laughs> Amanda and I make the short walk to the coffee spoon. The place is quiet. Today, just a few people hanging out and reading books in the cozy little nook. I walk up to the counter and see a familiar Pierce's face. Hey. I forgot his voice. Hey. You were the dude I yelled at a bunch the other night. Amanda casts a sideway glance at me. He tried to sh sell me shirts. And who might you be, miss? This is my daughter, Amanda. The person I am a father to and very protective of. An honor to make your acquaintance. My name's Pablo. Don't mention that I make witch house music. I wouldn't call witch house music, Aww. but okay. A piercing blow to my ego, though not one that will disillude my need to impress you. My innate dad senses tingle. I'm overwhelmed with fiery protectiveness energy. I must do something to protect my child. Change the subject, defend witch house, re-approach lines from taken. Change the subject. Anyways, Pablo, I didn't know you were here. Uh, yeah, man. Today's my first day. Matt's still training me. Hey. May come. May. Matt comes out from washing dishes in the back room to meet Amanda and I. He and I high five as fellow cool people do. I see you've met my newest employee. At your service. I'm only here until. Veil. Starts a world tour. When's that? Well, we have to put our, our record first. Alright, Pablo. Now, what do we do? Now, what do we do with the customers again? Right, yeah. Pablo clears his throat. Hello, good folks of May Bay. Can I just do a tasty caffeinated beverage? A smashing pumpkin spice latte with extra whip, please. Classic new American football decaf for cutie father John Misto Americano football. I don't drink coffee decaf for cutie. This one, Aww. father John Misto, please. That might be the worst pun I've ever heard. <laughs> hey, it's pure comedy. Yeah, puns are the highest form of comedy. Oh, I was making a joke off. Father John Minister has an album called Pure Comedy. The drink is named after Father John Minister, so I was, uh, yeah, never mind. Come right up. Pablo goes to work on our drinks while Matt observes him. He'll get the hang of it. For as goofy as a dude, he is. Kid works hard. Hey man, that concert was a lot of fun. We should take it again. Hell yeah. I'm actually gonna be done training Pablo in a couple of hours and going to a record shop. Wanna come along? Hell to the freaking yeah! Someone take me to a record shop, please. Pablo brings our drinks and Amanda buries herself in her laptop. This kid is way too much like me. 
I spend my time sipping my drink and cracking jokes with Matt. We sipping some tea, are we? Some gossip time? Last time we hung out, he told me that he had trouble hanging out with other people. But for some reason, he and I can talk and joke like old buds. It's weird. I feel really comfortable around him. Once Matt feels comfortable leaving Pablo on his own, I say goodbye to Amanda and we start walking to the record shop. Have you ever been to before? No, I mean, we have a record player sitting in the living room, but all we have is two copies of Frampton Comes Alive. Oh, this, this should be fun then. We're gonna find you some good stuff. Whoa. Record shops look cool. I don't even think we have any record shops in Adelaide. The walls of the record, the walls of the store are packed with posters, artwork, stickers, and records. A few people mingle around, flipping through milk crates of albums. Some indie band is playing through the speakers. It's a nice vibe. So, why do people still buy records? Isn't it kind of outdated at this point? Because they're vintage, bro. There's a lot of people who try to tell you that vintage sounds warmer <laughs> or more true to the artist's intent, but really, I think it's just nice to collect the records. I agree. I think records actually look really good. I personally don't own any records currently, but I think they look stunning. It <laughs> sounds great. Who's that voice? Huh, sounds great. It sounds like Aaron. It's cool that in this day and age, we have just about every song ever created available instantaneously on our phones. But there's something about holding an album and getting to see the artwork in your hands that I'll always love. That's me with books. You can get a book online like that. There's something about holding an actual book, flipping through the pages, smelling a new book. It's just like, even an old book, they have that really nice smell to them. I just love holding books on my hands. Just something about them is just like, it's like a portal to a new world. Whereas on my phone, I'm just like, it doesn't feel the same. Hey. I don't know. That's why I try and get as many of the records that I love in physical form as possible. I can get that. Remember when we were kids and we would have to wear around the radio with a cassette tape so we could re record our favourite songs? No, I didn't do this, but I actually remember a lot of people talking about this, especially their mum, but we don't do that. It makes each solution really special, and mixtapes are even cooler because of how much work they took. Honestly, if someone made me a mixtape with just songs of either songs I love, songs that we love to listen together, songs that have meaning or like you know you have like a little list and it's like play song one if you're feeling down or play song list five for something a bit silly you know now you just make a playlist and I think the last time someone gave me a real mixtape was in high school I look around the multi leveled record store and spot some genres future wave, jungle, anarch punk non exploitation. I have no idea where to even start. Man, this is a little overwhelming. Here, let me help you find something you might like. If you were a milkshake, what flavor would you be? Well, you know, my milkshake bring other bars to the yard. Purple. Cookies and cream, vanilla, strawberry. I love vanilla, but my favorite, favorite type of ice cream is cookie dough. Cookies and cream. What milkshake though? Milkshake, milkshake. Right. Famous. I'd be vanilla. If you could buy one tap candle scent for the rest of your life, what would it be? I think it would be either like freshly baked cookies or frangipanis. I love frangipanis. They're my favorite smell. Daffodil Mountain Spring? Mm. Camouflage Summer Breeze? Spring Creek Fireball? Or Power Violent Cherry Blossom? Jeez, they all sound amazing. I would probably buy all of these, to be honest. Spring Creek Fireball? I'm flush some breeze. Daffodil Mountain Spring. I'm trying to like, because I can like hear the words and I can almost smell them. So I'm trying to think. Power of Violence Cherry Blossom. That sounds a bit too strong. I think that's between these two. Daffodil. I'm going to do that one. What's your favorite ambient sound? Oh my god. I love, I love being in rain. Star Trek bitch. Oh my god, that's amazing. Bowling alleys. Mm, I love rain. How's, I'm going to say rain. What's your dream vacation spot? My backyard inside an active volcano, living off the fat of the land in Ibaz, starting a new life in the Baltics. Ooh. See, I don't care where the place is, as long as I'm with people who I love. You could literally take me to your backyard. I'd be just as happy as if you took me to, I don't know, Canada. I don't care. But just for the hell of this, I'm gonna say it's definitely in between these two. Inside an active volcano is terrifying. 
This ain't an Incredibles 2 movie. What's your deepest, darkest fear? I worry that people are nice to me because they want something from me. I fear that I don't deserve happiness and won't ever get it. Jesus, that's true. What if nobody existed but me? Am I fabricated this universe? Saying you two when the waiter tells you to enjoy your food. That's not a big fear. I just do that constantly. Um, no, to that one. I worry that people are nice to me because they want something from me. I think I'm going to have to do something. I feel that I don't deserve happiness and won't ever get it. The part where it's I fear that I don't deserve happiness, I definitely have thought of a fair bit in my life. Especially now. Um, yeah. Matt thinks for a moment. Mm. Oh, I know just the thing. Matt runs to the other end of the store and returns holding a record behind his back. He shows it to me. This is Dark Knight of the Souls by Danger Mouse. This one almost didn't get released, but there are a ton of awesome collabs on it. Super underrated album. I think you'll really enjoy it. Oh, dude, thanks for the recommendation. You're gonna have a great time with it, promise. Actually, sounds like a really cool album. Why can I bring our records to the cashier register? A young girl with a septum piercing and a buzz cut stands behind the counter with one earbud in. Usual stuff today, Matt. Just some light pickups. Matt puts three albums on the counter. Swear. I'm good at this by Diet Craig, Forever by Mystery Skulls, and Greatest Hits by R Remo Drive. Hey. Tie. The cashier rings up Matt and hands back his album in a bag. She stares at me suspiciously. Hey. Who's the nerd? This nerd is my buddy Jay. Jay, this beacon of human charm, is Molly. I got kicked out of art school for destroying my painting at the end of every critique. Lovely to meet you. Anyway, Matt, hey. is the open mic night still on? You know it. Are third waves going to be doing a special acoustic performance? Might see if we can get the girls together. There's an open mic night going on? Yeah, dude, we do it every month at the Coffee Spoon. Some amazing talents always come through. Go to fly for it. Go to fly for it right here. You and Amanda should come by that night. Matt blushes. I mean, you're not doing anything. <laughs> Will <laughs> Vale be playing? If only. I finished paying for my record and we head out to the store. Matt. <laughs> that does not say Matt. Man, what a trip down memory lane. I haven't been in a record shop like that since fans had shag carpeting. Now that you mention it, it's strange to think of all those weird little musical memories. What do you mean? Well, I think music is, is a very time and place sort of thing. A song is important to me not only in that I think it sounds good, but where it was and what I was doing when I listened to it. Matt, you can get me so much on a musical level. I'm one of those people that if I send you a song, I'm not telling you to listen to the song. I'm telling you to listen to the lyrics that is being said in the song. Because sometimes I can't get emotions and feelings out. Um, it's hard for me to explain things. So if I find a song that says the words I want to say, I'll just be like, listen to the song. Because it says the words I'm afraid to say. So I remember once I sent a song to two people and I was like, listen to this song. Okay. So I sent them the song and I asked them both, so what do you think? Both of them just said the song was good. I felt like writing that, that's not what I meant. Listen to the words and you'll understand what's going on. Especially right now, um, there's two songs that are just capturing my life to a T at this moment which is Call It Off by Nate Wants To Battle and Bones is it Bones? yeah I'm pretty sure it's Bones by Nate Wants To Battle too they are just oh, oh I love music there's music that reminds me of my exes of struggles through school being so poor that I didn't even know what my next meal was coming from all that stuff and listening to those songs remind me of those moments in my life it's true, music is can teleport you into brand new exciting places or places you are afraid to go to. Music is powerful. Yeah, now I think about even the pop concert Amanda made me take her to is special to me. I mean, I'm not really a fan of the band, but hearing their song on the radio reminds me of how young and excited Amanda was. And that even reminds me of younger me going to see my favorite bands in concert with all my friends. We would always go to my friend Cynthia Chapman's house before hand and smoke pot in her basement like we were so slick. Her parents definitely knew what we were doing. Wait. Hmm? 
When was the last time you smoked pot? Matt, stop and thanks for a moment. Just casually? It's been decades. Dude, me too. Where do you even get pot now? Is that even what the kids call it nowadays? I don't know. But I bet I could find out. Do you want to get high and listen to our new records? Kids! No drugs! Don't do drugs! I'm very anti-drug. I'm very anti-alcohol. No drugs. Ah, man. I think I'm good. It's a uh, full juvenile, I guess. Just go back to my place and listen to them then. I'm more than happy to get high on music, but not high on drugs. Whoa! The apartment's awesome! Matt and I walk back to the cul-de-sac and head into his house. I hope he isn't bummed about the no weed thing. We sit and listen through the diet sig album that Matt bought, which is catchy as hell. I look around the room again and see photos of communists are growing up. I spot a young woman with a huge smile in one of her pictures with the two of them. Who's that? Uh oh. That, that's Rosa. She was communist's mother. She died when communist was young. I'm sorry to hear that. Amanda lost Alex at a young age too. Alex. Hmm. We never really knew the partner's name before until now. And I like how they use Alex because it could have been girl or boy. That's smart. I can understand how hard that must have been. I look around again, spawning a frame gig poster hanging on the wall. On it is an illusion of Matt and Rosa surrounded by flowers. The cursive red letter reading, Stillness to Stillness the Dancing. Looks like they played the sound of garden over a decade ago. Were you trying to band together? Ugh. That was the reason I was touring so much when I was younger. We travelled the whole country in this rinky dinky little van. It was a hard start, but once we were gaining notoriously and seeing how much our songs meant to kids, it was just incredible. That's something I've always dreamt of is being in a car or being in like you know, a van or a bus or whatever you want to call it. An R V and just travelling somewhere with my friends, blasting music. Just relaxing and having fun instead of being so stressed and worked up about everything we do. Because I see my friends now and we're all stressed and get upset by the littlest things or we get mad and I miss the times where we're all just happy and we're all just carefree. You know, I want to bring that back. I want to bring back the sense of just... <sighs> like I can breathe again. I can lie down on my floor again and listen to music and... Not care in the, not have a care in the world, and not have to stress about if I've done that assignment or if I, you know, have messaged this person so they know I'm not dead or, you know, I just want to sit in front of a campfire, play a guitar, you know, have a guitar playing and just breathe, you know, just just, just breathe. I guess that's why I love campfire so much. It's my escape, it's my oasis, it's my, I don't know, something about a fire, I could just stare at it and feel completely peaceful and free. It's the same with the border, both of those things. Fire gives me the sense of warmth and comfort and care and water does the exact same thing. It gives me something of warmth and comfort and freedom and just happiness. Sorry. Wow, that seems like a s life some people only dreamt of. I agree. It was, and it was difficult at times. Couldn't have done it without someone by my side. Rosa and I knew that we couldn't do it forever. The long hours on the road, missing your family, sleeping in the van, and all that stuff. So when she became pregnant with Carmenista, we put down roots in our favorite town to play in, right here. Since she was a kid, Rosa always had a dream of running a quiet little coffee shop, and she, uh, Die before it opened. So sorry. Don't be. I'm not really sure what to say. I couldn't possibly count the number of times I've told people the same thing after Alex died. Matt gets up and flips the record next to the turntable. I notice a dusty piano. D did you play piano? <laughs> I'm out of practice. I don't think anyone's ever out of practice. I used to jam on the keys back in the day. Oh yeah? I fronted the hottest 7 pick piece ska band the Eagle Rock Band hey. High School had to offer. No way, you had a ska phase. Phase? Ska never dies. Except for Ska Minister Manifesto who broke up after the senior talent show hey. to obscure a solo career. Dude, that's so rad. 
Well, Matt pulls out the piano bench. Give me some of that tune tone love. Oh right. man, let's see if I still got it. I sit down at the piano. Um, stick with your classics, stick to your scar roots. Anyways, here's Wonderwall. Scar roots. Hey, I think I'm doing it. I'm playing scar. Wait, that was just smoke on the water. Hmm. Matt, I forgot how to play. The deep purple is always pretty shared, nonetheless. Hey. Alright, buddy, can you top that? I, uh, I shouldn't. Oh, come on. No, I, I'm. It's been a long time. Never too late to get back into it. Matt, you just sat through a, a butchering version of deep, pur deep purple smoke on the water. How much worse can it be? Matt stares at the piano for a second. Okay. I, uh, okay. Matt closes his eyes and runs his finger across the keyboard. He breathes in deep and starts playing a melody. If I didn't know that he hadn't played the piano for a long time, I would have never guessed it. Matt plays a soft, sweet tune filled with emotion. Never heard this before. Is this one of his original works? This is so cool. Matt finishes the song and finally opens his eyes. How was that? That was amazing. And that's another thing too I love. Is you could talk to me for 10 hours straight and I don't care. If you were happy and excited in or you just get lost in what you're saying because you're just that excited about what you're saying I would be happy too if I can see that you care about you know, what's being said or you care about you know you just have happiness and you just love you know you just love your work and you just you can see it I love that I love it so much I think that's why I love it when people just are so happy to do their work and I can tell when they're feeling down or they're feeling out of it as much as they play that they're not you can always tell and it sucks but like it's just kind of you, I love it when people are happy with their work it's just something I wanted to add oh it's nothing come on man that was killer you gonna put that out on the open, open mic tonight oh no I never play those well why not you're really good it's just, I, I just don't do it anymore. It's just, I don't like being up there and alone. Having so many people stare at me, it doesn't feel fun anymore. It's kind of like his sultry voice, I'm sorry. I get the sense that Matt's getting comfortable at the thought of it. I won't push him any further. Good. Alright, man, but I hope you know how beautiful your music is. Almost as beautiful as you. Thanks. Matt and I sit and listen to more records until it gets late, and I decide that I need to get to bed. Matt walks me to the door. Oh, chivalry! Damn! Missed having that in the 21st century. I have chivalry. Like, I walk my partner to the front door. Will they do the same? No. No, dude. I smile. No. I walk inside the house. It's dark, save for the sliver of light coming from beneath Amanda's door. Me? I knock lightly on the door and, Ama and enter Amanda's room. She's sitting at her desk with her camera editing photos. Hey, Amanda. Amanda swivels around her chair to face me, slump down. Hmm. So, what's up? Dad, I'm hungry. Huh? And? Wait, no. Ah. Hi, hungry! No. I'm Dad. And my collapse on the floor. <laughs> I promised myself I'd let, never let it come to this. Sorry, kiddo, you set it up, I spiked it down. You're a monster. Want some spaghetti? Yes, please. Oh. Amanda and I boil pasta and heat up the sauce in the pan. While well, I boil the pasta and heat up the sauce while Amanda watches. Despite my best effort, I'm not able to set it on fire. I was record collecting. It was great. Did you know Matt used to play in a band? No way. Was he good? I don't know if the band was good, but he played some piano for me tonight. It was amazing. He played piano for you? Dude. Yeah, I brought it up and that he should play on the open mic that's happening in his coffee shop, but he got kind of weird about it. Hey, I saw a fly for that. We should go. It's not too late to start a father-daughter pump plan and play a couple of tunes there. Let me break you out of your glockenspiel. I think I only know hot cross bun, but we can work off the court pros procession. Amanda and I... S I don't even know hot cross bun. Amanda and I have a nice dinner before she goes back to her room to do photography stuff. I end up watching True Life, I'm a House Hunter. Sounds like a song. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a house hunter. I'm a house hunter, yeah. <laughs> they stage an intervention for a house hunter who was crying uncontrollably over a colour of the wall. They know they can paint the walls over their house any colour they want, right? 
I'm not song song in my head or not. That's how you know it's a good day. That was actually a really sweet day. I liked that a lot. See, we need something simple like that. Yeah, okay, I can see why. 520 instead of 420. <laughs> I like that, that's, that's smart. Click to continue. King of Carrot Flowers. That's an interesting... Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about to already pack in a few bits of ice cream from the freezer. I turn off all the lights and walk down to my hall in my room. One of Armand is still awake. The kid needs some sleep. As I pass my room, I can hear a faint sound, but I can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she... crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda. The crying immediately stops. All right now. Her voice sounds strange. She sniffles. Let me make sure she's okay. Open the door. Amanda Panda, what's wrong? No, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugging against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. All right. I'll leave you be. I back out of the room and close the door gently behind me. She really starts crying again. I'm the same when it comes to if I'm upset. I want to be left alone. I want to... I don't want people there. I don't want to cry on anyone's shoulder. I don't want people being like, everything's going to be okay. You're going to be alright. Let me cry it out and I'll be fine. I hate people seeing me cry. So having you sitting right next to me being like, everything's going to be okay. is going to make me want to cry more. You just leave me alone. And I'll be fine. Wow, I have no idea why she's so She seemed totally normal. Oh my god, dads will never understand, I swear to god. I feel awful just leaving her to cry, but I also get the feeling that if I try to do anything, it would make her more upset. I can't stop mentally cycling through all the all sorts of awful things she could be dealing with right now. One other thing, I just want her to be happy and safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I do, I'm still thinking of Amanda. You're not thinking of your Maddie Patty? Your Maddie Patty? <laughs> Why did I say that now? I'm thinking of Matt Pat. No. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee and not pot. Amanda should. What? Also, why a pot of coffee? It's a cup. It's either a cup of coffee or you boil the kettle for coffee, not a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she would be willing to talk about whatever is bothering her. About 10 minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops her frozen waffle on the toast, toast and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything going on big at school today? No. Okay. Do you need a ride to school, sweetie? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster, lever up, and takes her still freezer burnt waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Okay. Haven't seen it like this in a long time. It's usually short lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully, it's supposed over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at the picture of Amanda and I hanging on the wall. Ow, I just hit my knee. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up again and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started. To cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. And then I t took her for ice cream and it was like nothing ever happened. To give me a bit of thought, I decided that I would force her to talk about it. I'm only going to make things worse but I have an idea. So I'm rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk into the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes me land to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey pumpkin! What? Can you come here for a second? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared and I know something's wrong. And I'm even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So, just... Whatever it is, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know your dad's in the corner who wants you to be happy. Honey, you know I'm bad with words. So I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull out a cake from the fridge that I'm placing on the table. Hopefully a frosting has set by now. Ta-da! Dad? Aww. 
took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over and this is beautiful this is really beautiful strawberry my neck gives me a big old hug I grab some plates and forks and serve up some delicious cake so, it's really stupid. What is it? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a char. Oh. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Yes, let's just start from the top. So you know how Emma is going to this fancy school. Art school in California, right? Emma R. The one who pooped in Death Goth Mule? No, that was you. The best friend? The other one? The best friend? Yeah. You got it! Wow, proud of you. Yeah. Anyways, ever since she got accepted, like, I feel like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and MP. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rosie M that both the Emmas, Grace and Noah, went out to a party to meet Kenzie F's. On the same night, they all told me they were busy studying for Calc AB final. Yeah. Yikes. So, another important piece of information is, oh god, this is embarrassing. I have a question on and um, that's the thing. Whoa, whoa, calm down. I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the list. Ding, ding. Anyway, so the only person I told my crush about was Emma, and she promised not to tell anyone. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I kept quiet and kept going about my business. And then one day, I invite everyone out to get nachos off the mall. And I know we've actually read all of this, but it's a nice refresher. After even not taking me back for like two hours, even though none of them have ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all said they were busy like simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll cheat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips and I really, really wanted nachos. Preach it, sister. So I go more anyway and get to the food court. And who do I see there but Gracie, Amazon, Noah. All hanging out, eating nachos without me. It gets better, I'm standing by the escalator watching them, I realise that Noah has his arm around Emma, oh, which is kind of weird, but then they kiss. Yes, I know it's weird, I still want like, hey, screw you guys, I don't want to be your friends. Grace is the... Hmm. Gossipy one? Grace is the one no one likes, I guess it's you now, so now we have no nachos, and I'm upset. Um, I'm a little confused, but I understand. That's okay, you're trying. So what happened next? At least, Emma says... Uh, you know what, let me just read it to you. Amanda pulls out her phone and reads word for word an arduous long string of text messages. Can you believe it? I can not believe that. Oh no. We're dating in secret for like months. She told me to be terrible for red. Wait, left me on red, what's that? You're horrible. Gotcha. Okay, so I'm going to actually fast forward all this because we've done all of this. It's not dumb. No friendships will last forever. I love you too, Dad. I love you too, Dad. You got Matt. You got dads. So we're gonna go out with Matt for the final date. I'm sure. Wait, I can't commit for a second. <laughs> we should have quickly save here. Now we're gonna message him. I can commit to Daddy, to Daddy Matt. Which still sounds weird to say, but that's okay. Matt and I have spent a lot of time together lately, and after we went to the record shop for the first time, it sort of became a weekly tradition for us to scope out Vinyl Fantasy. <laughs> Vinyl Fantasy! Oh my god. Okay, like instead of Final Fantasy. Oh my god. Really, guys? Vinyl Fantasy 7 for new releases. Quieter days ago, the coffee spoon. He's been trying to get me to branch out of my usual black coffee and try new drinks. No, he's really delicious. Since I've been spending so much time with Matt, Carmenista, and Amanda, I've been really close friends. Amanda's taking Carmenista under her wing and teaching her about photography, helping her with her homework and introducing her to music that's not just boy bands. Hey, BTS and Big Time Rush are great boy bands, thank you. Well, she did end up taking her to one of those screen cry dance boy concerts so Matt wouldn't have to go. A true heroic move. I can tell that communist sort of really looks up to her a lot. It's great that Amanda's trying to be a good mentor and a good sister. The open mic night is tonight. Amanda and I busy ourselves busy ourselves get ready. I try to pick out a nice outfit than usual and pace around the room. A bunch of really cool bands are going to be playing and I'm excited to see them. I haven't been 
to show since the first time Matt and I hung out. It's weird. Ever since Matt played piano for me that one time, I've never been able to convince him to do it again. He told me he also plays guitar, drums, and even trumpet. He still won't play any of them, I assume, because it brings up memories of his dead wife. Maybe that's why. For someone who's passionate about music, it's strange that he doesn't want to actually play it. You ready to go, Pops? I can hear Amanda in the hallway as she approaches my room. Yeah. Amanda pops her head and looks me over. She pinches the bridge of her nose. Fine, we can talk about this. Hmm. What? The sandals, they're older than I am. Hmm. Vintage, some would argue. I thought you threw them out, Amanda. When did you enroll the Fashion Academy? Fashion Police Academy, to be precise. I got kicked out because I was a loose cannon who didn't play by the rules. For example, you're not allowed to mix floral, but you can. But you totally can if you have a good eye for colour. Or if you're on Queer Eye, because Queer Eye is just... Yes! You're a jurisdiction rookie. Amanda guards the door until I pick out a better outfit. Stop. Those sandals are going directly into the evidence locker. What's the... It's the trash. You can pry the sandals from my cold dead hands, I promise. I propose a compromise. I keep the sandals, but won't wear them tonight. Then we have the exact argument the next time I... But next time I try to pull them out. I guess. Hmm. Come on, Dad, we gotta go. I mean, that's a good compromise. Oh, <gasps> fairy lights, I love fairy lights. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen the coffee spoon so packed. I saw familiar faces from the pup concert, or the pup concert, all slipping on their caffeinated beverages of choice. A couple of people are sitting, are sitting up on stage. I don't see Matt, but I'm sure he's busy in the back. Amanda and Carmen to find each other immediately and do their secret handshake. Some completely capping with their hands and then a big hug. Yay. I turned to see Hugo sitting at a table with none other than Damien. Oh yeah! Casually. Sure. Fancy seeing you two here. I am, as you know, a dedicated oh. patron to the arts. I'm a bit of traditional between Damien and... It's been a bit of a tradition between Damien and I now. Matt's open mic nights always seem to bring out the best talent in town. Sometimes, sometimes it gets a bit odd, even for my immediately electric, elected taste. Oh. You guys seem mad around? I don't really care about your taste. Yeah, it was just helping that Pablo kid get some equipment out of his van. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> Vale is playing the set? What? It's, uh, Witch House. Damien's ears perk. What is that? I don't know. Well, it sounds delightful. It's like an anime. It sounds delightful. <laughs> Manda says it isn't. Shame. I'm looking to some new music. Alright, so I'm gonna go find Matt and see if he needs any help. Head to the back room with the coffee spoon where I find Matt going over some last minute show details with Pablo. My dude! Pablo and I share a full on sincere bro hug. Glad you can make it, Jay. Wouldn't miss it for the world, man. I swear his tattoos are on this side. I'm just seeing things. You guys need any help? Uh, I think we're all set, actually. Pablo, can you remember my more people going up in? Well, you got the handsome, unforgettable <laughs> veil opening up the set. I made some really good room. With a selection from these new album, Witch Diaries. And then the third wave, who are extremely attractive and could beat me up, and I'd still be into it playing a three-person acoustic set. We got a little bit of a spoken word in there, a magic act, and then it looks like we're closing with Jonathan Jones and the Speakeasy Choir. No, absolutely not. Remember the ridiculous set that the band put on when we opened up for pop? Something, sometimes when it's quiet I can still hear the sound of accordion being violently thrown against the wall over and over again. They weren't that bad. No, you don't understand. Last time they played over mic, they literally they lit their base on fire, and the fire marshal had to shut us down. They also refused to pay for their drinks. Yikes! They're not playing tonight. Well, they're outside. All oh, seventeen of them. Tell them we're full. Then who's filling their spot? Uh, um. What? Matt, you should play. Come on, Matt, you should play. That was a bad idea! No, I should have saved myself! Damn it! I have 50-50 chance. No, I can't. I really can't. I'll play. 
What are you doing? Why would you do that? Stop talking! Close your mouth! Shut up! <sighs> I thought you didn't know how to play anymore. You don't know how to play anything! Scar comes to you in an hour. In the hour when you need it most without fail. Stop being so desperate! Who's your hot friend, Jay? <laughs> Is there a keyboard around? <sighs> yeah, I have one right here. Then it's settled. Dude, are you sure? No! The sure sky is gently played with static notes on the upbeat. Well, as long as nothing gets on fire, it can't possibly be worse than Jonathan Jones and the speakeasy choir. Matt grabs me by the shell and stares into my eyes. Thank you, Jay. I owe you big time. I settle back into my seat with the manor and watch the show start. The house is packed now with a few people even standing outside to watch. What have I gotten myself into? Amanda, may I made a mistake. Dad, if you brought a brand new pair of those sandals in hopes that I would be okay with you wearing them, I swear to God, I will burn them to death and I will wear them. I agree to pull out my scar. No. Absolutely not. I had to help Matt. Dad, I love you and support you, but we left Scar behind for a reason. Look, it's either this or we're in the splash room for a group of 20 musicians all crying at the same time for the sake of art. And I'm not being hyperbolic about the splash room thing. They literally hand out ponchos. Somehow this is a preferable option. I just have to play the thing. Play what thing? You don't know how to play an instrument? Just huh? promise you still love me after this. I promise. Hmm. But I may have to change my last name and hope you'll understand. Of course, my new last name is going to be Fire Blast. I have a friend named Fireblaze. 1901. Go check her out on YouTube. Huh? That's slight plugin. Amanda. Or maybe Cold Steel. Matt takes the stage on the royal floor. He grabs the mic and addresses us all, and I already screwed up this day, why am I even caring? Oh, I think everyone will come out tonight. Matt's so nervous. And I'm so nervous. I screwed up the day already. Oh, I should have left it. I'm so dumb. Because I'm staring at his mouth, and that makes me more nervous. Don't. Don't stare at his mouth. We have a jam pat roster of amazing local talent who you might already know or maybe have seen before. We'd like to see you again. I'm rambling now, sorry. Aw, Matt! So, um, let me just bring out a dear friend of mine who's making his live show debut. Please welcome to the stage, <laughs> Vale. The crowd cheers again and Pablo bounces up to the stage, beaming. He sets his up his two laptops and keyboard and launches into his set. Thank you, everyone! This one is called Witch House and Never Dies in Your Next. Pablo hits the crowd with a heavy, inaccessible, simpson bass layer underneath drum samples and clips from science fiction shows played in reverse. It's maybe not the right show for this, but everyone seems to be enjoying whatever this is. At the end of the song, Pablo jumps to the mic. Thank you to all the very words who came out tonight. Push in the crowd cheers. Here's a fan base. Already. Here's a name for his fan base. This is his first live show. You can buy t shirts at the trunk of my car to the show. I also like to thank my mom to come. Out and watch me play, you my rock, ma. Love you, hun. Pablo plays a few more songs that are actually super fun to listen to. Wow, definitely did not see that coming. So she has an Amanda strong word thoughts about the genre. Once he's done, he vacates the stage and Matt jumps up, back up. Big round of applause for everyone, on Pablo, who coincidentally works here. Yay, Pablo. And hey, uh, next up are a group of young ladies who've been tearing up East Coast with a riot punk for three tears now. Years, I mean years, three years. Sorry, the right of my hand smudged because I'm sweaty. I shouldn't have told you I'm all sweaty. Sorry, uh. Wow, he's really nervous. Put your hands together for the third waves. Let's cut Molly from Vinyl Fantasy 7 takes the stage, followed by two girls with colorful hair and fishnet stockings. All of them are wearing combat boots and all of them look mad about something. It's so energy that it almost seems like a pit is going to open up in the coffee shop. I overlooked to Amanda. He's clearly enjoying the hell out of this arcanic female fronted power rock. Dad, can I get a lip ring? Sure, if you want to pay for it yourself. Come on, it's not fun if you. It's not an act of youthful rebellion. After the third way closes on their set, a variety of acts play to the delight of the sometimes horror of the crowd. The magician tries to turn a cup of coffee into a cup of coins, but ends up just spilling the hot coffee all over himself and dropping the coins. As each act leaves the stage, I get more and more nervous. There are so many people here. 
Don't know anything about how to play the piano other than it has keys and you have to touch the keys to make sound. Also, I must spill the flat white stripes in my hand because I'm trembling so much. No joke, Dad. I'm rooting for you. You're gonna knock him dead. Thanks, man panda. An impromptu comedy group takes the stage. There are suggestions from the crowd and end up doing a scene that was supposed to be about coffee, but instead turned into a five minutes of dick jokes. Classic. Is this Markiplier your welcome toy? I'm kidding, I love you guys. I had a hard time laughing. My stomach is tying itself into knots. Not just regular knots either. Like the kind of knots you get when you're throwing your phone charger, headphone, and laptop charger into the same bag. Ugh. I don't know where Matt sits down next to me. Hey, doing okay? Everything's great. I'm really sure I'm okay, but I can't get the words out. I'm here. Alright, just make sure you know I'm gonna do great, Jay. Matt squeezes my shoulders and jogs back up to the stage. Everybody would dance on the last act of the night. Now this person, who's my friend, is making their turn to the stage after a long hiatus. Please welcome formally the Scumuska Manifesto J Sarcasm. Everyone cheers as I take the stage. Damien and Hugo stare at me in shock. Uh, hey everyone, good to be here. Thanks for having me on. Great crowd. Um, my name is Jay, but you can call me by my stage name. Frankie Two-Tone, Five Iron Freddy, Thomas Frankie Two-Tone. The crowd claps politely and I sit down at the piano. That's a lot of keys. There's so many keys. Do pianos usually have this many keys? God, these lights are really bright. Someone coughed. I guess, uh, I guess that's a good stage banter now. I have to play a song. This song is called Beam Me Up. Ska T. Deep breath. How hard can it be? Oh, don't tell me there's a mini game for this. No matter how distraught this is, I just have to make through the whole song and I have to save the day. Here's nothing. I don't know what I'm doing. Please sing along. Oh god. Pick it up, pick it up. Oh, singing that easy scatoon. Unity, watch us fill up the room. Room boys coming for you. Take one in. If you don't sing tonight, I'll be alarming. I. Everybody, Scar, beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up to the sky track and to press. Beam me up, Scotty. Doing your best deserves an S. Aww. Beam me up, Scotty. I had no idea. Look at Cassie, a bunch of people sh uh, shifting their seats. Oh no, I'm losing them. Scar really is dead, and I killed it. Everybody scar! Everybody scar! Like a cheer, chug aboard, tie wearing angel descending from two toned heaven. Matt walks on stage playing the guitar. You look guys and he gives me a reassuring smile as he effortlessly plays the chords to the song. I look out and see the crowd go wild to Matt's appearance on stage. Everyone's bouncing around now. It fills me with renewed energy as I, we, jump into the chorus. Beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty. To the sky and surprise. Matt jumps into the impromptu solo that was way better than the one Darren Springsteen wrote in high school. We made it to the end of the song in one piece and the crowd goes wild. I'm moist with sweat, head to toe. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Stella. The crowd patient practically screams, they're all starting they all start chanting Matt's name. They want to hear you play, man. Matt smiles. I think I'm ready. Excuse myself from the stage and take a seat next to Amanda as Matt cozies up to the microphone. I take back what I said about Scar, that was pretty cool. I high five Amanda and we took the stage. Hey everyone. More cheers. I haven't played in front of people in a long time, but it's cool to be back. This is one goes out to my good friend. 
Matt locks eyes with me. We both smile. You've helped me to be able to do this again. Thank you. This is an old one from stillness and dancing. The entire crowd excitedly jumps to their feet. Matt closes his eyes and starts playing an upbeat, intricate melody. The crowd sways to the music. The look entirely as peace with a small smile on his face as he sings. After he finishes his song, the crowd instantly insists on an encore. He ends up playing a few more tunes and to a chord to an adoring audience before thanking everyone for coming out. The moment he steps up stage, he gets mobbed by people. Oh. Everyone seems to be amazed that he's playing again. Damien and Hugo oh. thread their way through the crowd to talk to me. Hey. That was amazing. It was certainly a sight. Do they make industrial dark wave ska? I'm not too sure if that genre exists, but it's never too late to start a band, apparently. Glance back over at Matt, who's hugging a bunch of people. They really seem excited to him for him to play. Well, yeah, he hasn't played since he lost Rosa. What? I didn't realize it suddenly all makes sense why Matt was so reluctant to play. I was taking him so to jump on stage with me just now. The crowd slowly filters out into the streets as the show ends. I decide to stick around a little longer to see if I can talk to Matt. Hey, I'm going to take Harmonista to get ice cream. If she Is it okay if she sleeps over? We're going to paint our nails and start a punk then. Yeah, go have fun. Just please don't wake up the neighbors with any biting truths about the government or whatever. Don't worry, we'll wake them up figuratively instead. Amanda and Communista bump fierce and head out. I spot Matt finishing up conversation with a couple of stragglers on their way out from the coffee shop. Hey, Matt. Hey, dude. Need help closing up? I'd love that. Matt and I stack up the chairs and sweep the floor in silence. We carry the stage equipment back to Matt's fan. We can see Pablo saying merch to a crowd of people out of his trunk. Shirts of the finest quality. Every step of production from thread to stitch. Overseen by yours truly. Graphic design fit for a king. Hey. That kid's gonna go far. We head back into the coffee spoon and Matt puts the finishing touches on closing. When we're all done, Matt and I lean up against the counter. Thank you for saving me out there. All in all, it ended up being pretty cute. Plus, you protected us from Jonathan Jones and the Speakeasy Choir. Someone told me that they tried to do a street performance down the road, and they got arrested for trying to form a human pyramid in traffic. Did it feel good to be a stage again? Yeah, it really did. I um, heard that you stopped playing after your wife died. Didn't realize it had been that long. Um. Yeah. See, his tattoo changed. It was on this side before. Unless he has it on both sides. You just can't see it. But then, like, all the bracelets, too. That looks like he wanted to say something, but he's having a hard time getting it out. And he takes a deep breath. I'm not really a people person, um, obviously. Crowds make you nervous as hell, which is not exactly the best for performing live music. But when I was with Rosa, she lit up the room. I could follow her lead. After she passed, I was lost. Even touching a guitar was too much. I tried playing for people over and over, but the music would never come out. So I just gave up. I guess what I'm trying to say is life wasn't this scary when I had someone in my corner. Someone I felt safe with. I um, hadn't felt like that for a long time until tonight. What changed? You? Blood rushed to my face. Oh. When I saw you looking so scared on, scared on stage, you reminded me of myself and I didn't want anyone else to have that, f to feel that bad. But when I got there and started playing, for the first time in forever I felt comfortable. I was having fun. I'd spent all this time being so afraid of performing that I forgot how much I loved it. The strength gave me strength, whether you were trying to or not. You got me out of my comfort zone, so thank you. Thank you for helping me realize that I can do this. I'm glad I could help you. You are coming on stage. Didn't think you would stick your neck out for me like that, especially considering all of this. That really meant a lot to me. Well, you mean a lot to me. Did it! Man, I look guys. He leans in and kisses me, quick and soft. He pulls away and covers his mouth. Oh God, I'm sorry. I um, sorry. I can't believe I just did that. Neither can I, but I'm glad you did. I lips touch again. I brush his hair out of the way. Rest my hand on the small of his back. Oh, his neck. Matt pulls me closer. Everything about him is sweet and soft. His lips taste like vanilla. He smells like coffee cake. I can feel his smile through my kiss, which makes me smile. 
He laughs into my mouth and I can't help but laugh too. Our teeth knock against each other. Ow. A moment, the moment I open my eyes, I realize we're still leaning against the expression machine. Maybe the coffee shop isn't the right place for this. Maybe you're right. Let's go back to my place. Day complete. That's only going to be an A, I think, or even a B. Yeah, I'll give that record another spin. Yeah, I stuffed up really badly with that day. The worst grade I've gotten for a day. It's rude to ask people about their mysterious hand tattoos. Dad tip number 11. Well, we're going to get to the ending of this and then we'll end the episode. I think everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her in the car where I gotta act natural. Be cool, Jay. Be cool. Man walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Got something fishy. Okay, so this is all the same. What? No, yeah, this is all the same. I don't know what to say. Jay, my dude. Okay, this is when it's different. Pablo, how's the shirt business going? My buddy, I got men's shirt, I got women's shirt, I got tank tops in a variety of sizes, shapes, and colors. Each one of them a fine quality screen printed with the logo and visage of well renowned witch hunt outfit <laughs> and veil. Perishable at respected retailers, but most specifically, I let my car. I'm also selling my mom's world famous homemade apple butter. Never stop hustling, Pablo. Never stop hustling. Baby, you got it. Joe. Ryan, you made it. Ah, oh, I didn't pass up good Mac. What do you think of the party? It's not bad. Just not bad? Yeah, it's not bad. It's a little bit. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy shots up. Hi, Amanda's dad. Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thank you so much for inviting us. You're very welcome, tiny child who knows how to play a compliment. Right now, look, guys, this isn't over. Hey, bro. Bro, this is really rage taking our older age into consideration. Try to be in better is what out tonight. Don't let me get too wild. Don't worry, dude. I'll keep an eye on your fruit punch and day. You know, I'm really glad we're bros again. Let's hit the gym sometime soon, huh? Sure thing, dude. Brian Hazel peek out of behind Craig. Hi, little ones. Hello. Hiya. Thank you for all the ice cream cake. Wait, girls. How much of that did you eat? Brian ate four pieces. Ask any witness. No, I didn't. Hazel ate four pieces and wanted to pin on me because we look alike. Out of your face, no one will ever believe you. Oh boy. I'll let you guys figure this out. Good seeing you, Greg. Let's hang out soon, yeah? Totally. Tell them, mind you, congrats for us. Okay, we know what you say. Ba ba ba. I don't want to skip past. I swear a man and come in the corner of the party and wonder what they're up to. So I walk up, I can tell that they're already deep in conversation. Listen, it's like prison rules. First day of high school, you gotta establish yourself at the top of the pecking order. Uh, really? No. Just find a group of people that you like and hang out with them. Be yourself. Don't worry about being cool. You'll find friends. And try not to kiss anyone who has braces. You get stuck, kiddo. Hey guys. Hey Amanda's dad. Carmen is here getting ready for high school. Got any advice? When you join a band, pick the easiest instrument to carry. I'm still walking a little side away from my success phone days. Ah. Flute it is. Alright, I'll leave you guys to it. Come here, so me and Amanda still on for dinner with you and your pops tomorrow? Yes, so we're already planning a carrot cake for you guys. But I keep making my rounds. I'll leave those two to inspire. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on the back porch step. The sun is setting and everyone seems to be eating their fill. Amanda walks over and sits down next to me. Killer of party pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I uh, also have something for you. Me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings once or anything, but Grant wasn't easy, but it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been there f for me through everything. There's, there's been times in my life where you were my only friend. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you, but I realized that everything you've done for me ha to prepare me for this, I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am without you today. Don't cry, don't cry. I swear to God, Jay, if you cry, we're gonna have to watch another TV show. 
You're the best, Dad. I love you. And I'm crying. Here are the waterworks. Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. Present time. Amanda hands a tiny wrap package. I tell her wrapping off to find a frame picture of me and Amanda. It's hmm. us. Kind of shocking. All of our photo albums of just pictures of me, huh? I figured we need at least one photo together before I left. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intellectual woman, young woman, and I'm so excited to see what your future holds for you. Knock him dead, kid. Always do. Amanda and I share a hug. This is the only beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Oh, I'm going to break so much stuff, intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably going to have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. As long as you don't break my heart. Amanda hops up. Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. I glanced over the backyard where Matt is sitting on a bench beneath our cherry blossom tree. He smiles at me. I'll leave you to it. Me and the Amber's going to go ice cream. Love you, Pops. Amanda runs off to join her friends. Our this is every ending, just different people. Smart. I take a seat next to Matt at the last guest make their way out the party. Seems like Amanda's really enjoying herself. Thanks for putting together such a nice surprise. Carmen's middle school graduation is coming up in a year or two. I'm sure that for the right fee I could put up something together. <laughs> Only if I get to DJ. Matt looks down his hands. It seems like he does this whenever he's trying to figure out the right words to say. Hey, I just wanted to say that. Gosh, this is going to sound really dumb no matter how I say it. So here it goes. I haven't felt this happy in a long time. You, you brought out the best in me and it was just... It wasn't just because of the scar, although that was really cute. Every moment that we've gotten to spend together since we met has been an adventure, and I just hope that we can get to keep doing that. We make a pretty good team, you know. I mean, I'll let you handle the music playing, and the music singing, and the actually pretty much anything related to music. <laughs> but I can organize a party pretty well. And I am also good at kissing, so that's a big plus. You don't say that even if you think it, because you shouldn't be thinking that. <laughs> That's true, you're a very nice kiss. That's how you slide it to the other side. I slide my arm around Matt and round my fingers through his hair, giving him a small kiss on his cheek. He giggles. <laughs> See, that was a good one. And hey, I've actually been working some new stuff. It feels really great to write again. Oh man, Matt, that's amazing. I'd love to listen to it sometime. If, I mean, you were comfortable sharing it with me. Maybe I could share some new tunes I've been working on in the studio later. You know, I was just going to insist that we had a horn session. Whatever works. Matt rests his head on my shoulder and sighs happy. You know what? I'd actually like that. <laughs> You're never too busy or important to be kind to others. And that was a beautiful ending. We know all of this. Um, Nathan Sharp is Craig. I love... Forget to marry. So these are all of the people. Daddy. I absolutely love this game, and I'm sad that the last episode is going to be coming up tomorrow. Oh, not tomorrow. It's going to be coming soon, so it's kind of sad. Whoa. Hello, what is this photo? Is this him on the open? Oh, it is him on the open mic night. Ah! Ah! So I think we got a pretty good ending. And that is the end of Matt's route or route, however you want to say it, from Dream Daddy. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, let me know in the comments below. And next, we're going to be going down Hugo's route. And if you guys really want me to do the other three dads, please let me know. If not, then that will be the last episode. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Sarcasm out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. See ya. To all my coffee lovers out there, that was for you.